Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mackie and tonight we're doing something that we haven't done in a really long time and that is sharing your scary stories. These are actually one of my favorite videos to film because you guys send me the absolute craziest, scariest stories and I have been getting so many emails and DMs with your stories that I've just been dying to tell you guys about because some of them are just absolutely mind-blowing and just really interesting. And I've been getting so many comments asking when I'm going to be doing another one of these videos or if I'm still doing them in general. And yes, I am. It's just been a really long time. I've been so busy, especially with Amanda and I's new channel. And apparently it's been paying off because we're at 107,000 subscribers now. It's been two months. We actually got ranked number 10 top web group in all of 2021, which is... We... We... We didn't even, we never expected anything like this to happen. So it's just absolutely insane to us. So thank you guys. And if you haven't checked out our channel, go give it a watch because we've been going to the most haunted locations doing overnights and big investigations. And it's been so much fun. We're actually going somewhere for another haunted overnight tomorrow in a super famous haunted hotel. So that is going to be really fun and terrifying at the same time. So stay tuned for that. But for this channel, I'm still gonna continue to be doing investigations on my own with granny, with other friends. Enough of the chit chat. As you can see, I'm in the haunted garage because I don't like filming these videos in my room anymore because it's genuinely scary. I feel like when I talk about this stuff in there, it stirs everything up and my biggest fear is something happening to me in the middle of the night, which it does every time I film one of these videos in my room. And lastly, if you guys want to share one of your scary stories with me, you can email them to me at MackieAlbertson21 at gmail.com or DM them to me on Instagram. And if you do send me a story and you want to be featured, please make sure that you put whether you want to be anonymous or if you would like me to leave your social media at. But now that that's all out of the way, let's get into your scary stories. This first story comes from someone named David and it is titled My Demonic Possession. A few years ago, there was an entity or shadow person haunting my girlfriend's apartment, her mom's apartment, and a friend of ours across the parking lot's apartment. It would haunt all three places. At night, we would look across the parking lot and see a shadow figure standing in the window. We would call our neighbor on the phone and she would check it out and see nothing in the window, but we can still see it standing there. When it would haunt Jenny's apartment, my ex-girlfriend, it would be a flash of black across the wall like it was running from room to room. This was the time I was meditating a lot and trying to have an out-of-body experience. Eventually, I get my wish. Twice. Coming face to face with the demon. I lived about six miles away from my girlfriend's apartment. Me and Jenny's attitudes were changing frequently, always arguing, obviously making the creature stronger. I've actually heard that a lot. If there's a demon in your house, you'll notice family members start arguing more and just not acting like themselves and having sudden outbursts or changes of personality while inside the house. But if they leave the house, they're perfectly fine. It is true what he says that these things do feed off of arguments and negative energies that you put out as well. It's at nighttime and me and Jenny are in bed with her little toy poodle named Fancy. <laughs> oh, that just made the whole story a lot more lighthearted. Okay. Next thing I know, I wake up and the back of my head and neck gets really stiff and starts to vibrate and shake. And my head lifts up without my control. Jenny feels this and she sees it. It frightens her and she just holds me and tells me it's going to be okay over and over until I stopped. I hold her and tell her I'm okay. What are you doing? She says my head was shaking. I thought you were having a seizure. I told her, no, everything's fine. Go back to sleep. I knew everything was not all right. I don't know what that was. A few nights go by and I'm at my house on the phone with Jenny. And out of nowhere, we start to argue again over nothing. I feel like this creature is purposely making us fight. But I get off the phone with her. Things change for the worse here. The back of my head and neck starts to get stiff and vibrate again uncontrollably. My head tilted to the side, all stiff, I can't control it. Next thing I know, my vision blurs and my eyesight gets pushed back, like I zoom out into a deep tunnel. I see this black mist coming towards me. It goes inside me and I can feel this creature everywhere, 
but the worst part of all is that I cannot control my body. I storm out of the house into the night. This thing controlling my body, I'm panicking on the inside. I know every intention this creature wants to do. It wants to go to Jenny's apartment and murder her, basically. Oh my, okay. <laughs> It's pitch black outside. I live in a country. There's woods everywhere. This creature is forcing me to walk this road in the middle of the night towards my girlfriend's apartment. I can feel his thoughts, his emotions. It is horrible. Now what gets worse is that the entire time my body and us kept getting closer to her apartment, the more animalish he acts. I am terrified. I'm stuck inside my own body. He starts to speak in tongues a language I've never heard of before, while slobbering and spitting all over the place and growling out of his own mouth. Oh, sorry, spitting all over the place and growling out of my own mouth. Almost every car that passed by me slowed down. Close enough to see them, they would race down the road away from me, trying to get away. By their reactions, it frightened me more. I believe those people driving by also saw my eyes were completely black and slobbering like a rabid dog. I'm walking closer and closer to her place, trying to gain control over my body. It's not working. As I walk down the road, I listen to him talk. It's not my voice. It's not a language of this earth. I'm panicking more and more because we are close, about 200 yards from her place. I'm begging for someone to help me. I walk past the church. Maybe Pastor Z can help if he sees me. I walk by the church. Nobody is there. Another church about 50 more yards up ahead on the left. People are there. It is open. I could hear them congregating and worshiping Jesus Christ. I know miracles in Jesus does exist. The second I walk past the parking lot of that second church, I can feel this creature get ripped out of me. It takes all the air out of my lungs. I fall to the ground on my knees, gasping for air. I vomit. After I collect myself, I look around. I look ahead and realize I was about 80 yards from Jenny's apartment. I start to cry, bawling my eyes out, almost puking again. I can't believe what almost happened. I can't believe I was possessed. I turned around and ran the whole six miles back to my house crying. This is a true story and it haunts me to this day. I never told Jenny and I think I never will. Let me know what you think. <laughs> what I think? That right there is my biggest fear in all of this. All that I go out and do. That is my biggest fear, something like that happening to me. It was a lot more scary to me when I first started this, but now that I've been doing it for a while, I know how to protect myself. I know not to be fearful of these things, because that's what they feed on. So it's different now, but it's definitely always in the back of my mind, and that is absolutely terrifying. I, I'm so happy that thing got ripped out of him before he got to the girlfriend's house. But yeah, I hope you're doing okay now. Nothing like this has happened. And thank you for sending in this story. This next story comes from someone named Travis. I've had a few experiences that have happened to me and I wanted to share them with you. The first experience that happened to me was when I was seven or eight years old after my grandpa passed. The TV came on and the remote was away from me. I looked at the TV and the background was a grayish white color. I saw my grandpa's face in the middle of the screen. We talked and after a conversation, the screen went back to black. The second experience I have was after my grandma passed away and it happened twice. My parents went out on a date night and I was in my room that's upstairs. I was playing video games or watching a movie. I heard my grandma's walker going from the living room to the bathroom. I paused my TV and two minutes later, I heard the walker again from the bathroom to the living room. I walked downstairs and nobody was there. The second time it happened was when my parents were out of town and my mom's friend who was house sitting for us stayed in my parents' room. They heard the exact same thing I had heard, the sound of my grandma's walker. The last experience happened after my dad and I went out to celebrate my mom and dad's anniversary, the first since she had passed. After dinner, my dad and I decided to go to the cemetery and visit my mom and we were the only ones there. We visited with her for a little bit and I told her that dad and I were going to be leaving. I love her and we'll be back to see her. As we started to walk away, we both heard a woman crying. My dad looked over at me and asked if I had heard that. The sound of a woman crying? Yes. I called out, is anyone there? I got no response and we looked back at each other and said it looks like that was our sign to go. I'm so sure that that was my mom I heard that night because this happened after I said goodbye and we would see her later. And that is how he ends it off. 
See, it's those type of stories that are so positive and I enjoy just, even though I know our family members are still here with us because I've seen them, Amanda's seen them, it's just reassuring to know that someone else experiences these same type things with their family members. So if any of you out there are hesitant, whether someone you love is with you or not, I can promise you that they are. So thank you, Travis, for sending that. So this next story comes from someone named Scott and he says, As you might remember, even though I don't believe in UFOs or aliens, I do believe in other paranormal things. Anyway, this one involves a local legend. Years back, 1955 or so, a bridge was built over the ravine that later became a park. Now to be clear, this might sound like the Pasadena Bridge, but it's similar, just not the same. Anyway, the bridge was built and after there was an accident. A car went off the side and into the ravine. As I understood it, three out of the four people in the car survived the crash. It's a 60 foot drop to the ground. The car driver is who didn't survive. Within a year of this accident, a car matching the description of the one that crashed was seen speeding towards the bridge and then off of it, just like it did before. Only problem is when police and rescue crews arrived, there was no car found. The crash survivors at some point decided it was time to make a memorial for their friend. I forgot to mention they were all college students and they knew each other their entire lives, lifelong friends. They had just heard about this phantom car and thought it was just all a telltale. That is until they saw it for themselves. It did just exactly what they had heard. So they had their proof. They went on with the memorial. Many times over the years, this car has been seen. Longtime residents have learned to just go with it. Amazingly, there hasn't been any more accidents in all this time despite how suddenly the car will appear. So far as I know, it was just one car. It's a narrow bridge. The road goes from four lanes to two lanes across the bridge. Signs that indicate this before the bridge. It was about three years ago, I was in the local supermarket. I overheard some people talking about the phantom car 15th Avenue, as it's sometimes known as. I finally went to this bridge. At first, it was nothing more than a nice, serene walk over a bridge. Then it turned creepy fast. I have a weird sense of things when they get spooky. I don't actually see spirits unless they're really active. I sense them in a different way, like I get nervous or feel like I'm being watched, something like that. Other times it's a sense that something's about to happen, something was about to happen. I stopped on the bridge and got the sense I should turn back. So I did. Once I got back to where the bridge starts, I span over the park and I saw it. I don't know cars very well, to me a car is a car, but this one stood out since it wasn't like any other car I'd seen. A golden white car came flying down the street, appearing out of nowhere. For whatever reason, I watched it as it went past. It went over the side and down. There was a guardrail, then a cement barrier, then the sidewalk, then another cement barrier. A car shouldn't be able to go through that. Pretty sure that was the idea. This car went through all of that, and it didn't damage anything. My heart skipped two beats. I just saw the phantom car. I went to where it was and looked down. Not sure what I was looking for, there wasn't anything there. The park entrance is on the other side, another mile from where I was at least. And I thought I heard someone say, is everyone all right? But there wasn't anyone around. It was just coming from below the bridge. What could I do? I just went back to the house. The phantom car and I had a personal experience, lol. And that is where it ends off. So thank you, Scott. I'd love to go to that park and see a phantom car. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds super cool to me. Maybe Amanda and I will go there sometime. This is one that I'm going to end off on. I'm not even sure if I'll include this in the video because I don't know if I'm able to share it, but if I get permission to share it, then you'll see this story. But this is my favorite story I have ever been sent, so I'm really hoping that you guys can hear it. Back when I was a captain in the fire department, we responded to a house fire early in the morning. When we arrived, the roof was breached and the flames had taken out two windows on the second floor of a split level home. We made entry and even though the roof was breached, the thermocline was about two feet off the first floor. We wouldn't have gone in at all, but a child was missing and the father and mother had gone out of the house, but they couldn't get to their daughter's room. The father was being treated for burns on his hands and forearms as he had tried to go in after her. Suffice to say, they were frantic. They told us that her room was on the second floor, second door on the right, simple enough. We made entry and the stairs faced the door. Rapid bursts from the TFT to the ceiling brought the smoke level up to about four feet from the floor. That's when my hand lineman and I saw something that neither of us could explain. I saw motion to my left down on the main floor. 
Someone was walking around downstairs. I pointed to my hand lineman and he saw it too. We couldn't see a body as a person was in the smoke, but we could see the legs and feet clearly. It looked to be a man wearing olive green trousers and leather shoes. I wouldn't say that the legs were dancing, but they were certainly moving in a way to get our attention. We redirected back downstairs, and I see the legs go into the door on the right side of the small hallway. We both saw the legs go into that room. We get down to the hallway, and the door is closed. Feeling the door, there weren't any flames behind it, and we made entry to discover that we were in a bathroom. The light was on, and curled up in the bathtub was the little girl. There was no one else in the room with her. We broke out the window and got her to a second crew keeping the house next door from catching fire. We looked around the bathroom again and couldn't find the man we both seen go into the bathroom. There was nowhere for him to hide in there. We withdrew from the house and did exposure control as the house was a complete loss with the fire already ingressing into the living room. The parents had gone with their daughter to the hospital where she was checked and cleared to go later that morning, and the man suffered only first and small second degree burns on his hands and forearms. The family stopped by the station and wanted to thank us for saving their daughter. They asked us how we knew to check the first floor bathroom, and I asked them if they knew anything about a man in olive green trousers and leather shoes. The man pulled out his phone after a minute of thinking and showed us a picture of two old men standing in a lawn. One of the men was clearly wearing olive green trousers and those leather shoes. The man we had seen on the first floor had passed away in 1976 and was the man's father. The little girl's grandfather had showed us where she was. We were all speechless. It's the only time I've ever seen a ghost during a response. And that is my favorite story I have ever been told because it's just so real and raw. And literally, they saved that girl's life because this man's father had directed them. And that's just so cool to me. So on that note, thank you everyone for sending in your videos. Like I said before, keep sending them. I love reading them and sharing them with you guys. But other than that, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on post notifications. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.